what does it mean to have a full-time approach in a part-time program? Yeah, so essentially, I mean, what we're looking to achieve here is is the ideal. Um, and I think like in the AFLW world in its current current status, whilst we would love it to be full time, um, we're, we're dealing with a, with a part time approach. Um, and essentially what we're looking to do is to take um, everything that I suppose you'd get out of a full time elite sport environment um, and, and sort of filter through um, all the stuff and, and take a bit of a holistic approach and filter through the fluff. Um, I suppose, and apply that to that part-time approach as best you can. I mean, obviously, time constraints are the biggest, the biggest staff limiting factor in that in that regard. But I think what we do, um, or what we look to do a fair bit, is try to look for windows of opportunities. And and Geordie's spoken about it tonight already, and and so has Ben about where where can we actually, um, I suppose, microdose some of this work and get little bits of work in over the week. So it takes the pressure off um, other nights or those training sessions, or it might be a lifting session um, at a certain stage. So where can you look at those little windows of opportunity to take what you need and, and um, really get some good quality work in um, at the same time? And on that note, like for if you're leading a meeting for the, all those, uh, whether they work in sport or, or not, but you're, if you're facilitating the meeting, um, how important is it to prepare uh, what you want to cover in the meeting and then how important is it to make sure that what comes up in that meeting is then action? Yeah, I think like anything, it just comes back down to that that time management and, and making sure that um, in, in a meeting sense where you're, where you're going to be dealing with multiple different, um, I suppose, key stakeholders in that in that instance and, and each person is obviously going to try and pinch as much time as they can um, and, and just getting your, your key points across and, and a bit of education to different areas on, on why um, your time is important and why you should be allocated that certain amount of time is, is really important. And, and from a from the athlete's perspective, um, that maybe they're not in the semi-professional program yet, but they're working hard to, to get in there, how, how often do you think they should be training? I know it's a really broad question, but what should their, um, let's say they've got two footy sessions a week and then game day, as their sort of week at the moment, how much extra work, craft and and in the weights room on the field do you think they should be doing? Yeah, I think, as you said, it is quite broad from that regard. I mean, it can be, um, it's, it's going to depend on a lot of different things and whether particularly in, in I suppose, um, development pathways and things like that, if they are offering strength and conditioning as a part of the program or do they need to go and outsource that? So, I mean, suggestions along that lines, I mean, as long as they're probably looking to get at least one to two good quality sessions in um, and then the length of those sessions can be determined on um, the program that they're in and, and the time that they may have available and the, and the rest of the factors that go on outside of their life. And what about what are the common misconceptions with a part-time program do you think from the athletes or, or coaches perspective? Yeah I think I think uh, I mean I, I spoke about time as being a bit of a limitation before but I think time does get used as a bit of a, a cheap easy option out um, I think what you need to do is what you're getting given in regards to your training sessions and the hours within the club, that's that's what it is. So I think being able to be creative around that and actually get a little bit smarter around it and go, well, as I said before, where are these little windows of opportunity? And we spoke about it um, before and I think Geordie touched on it as well, but being able to, we split our, our lifts pre and post training. So they'll do sort of half their gym session pre-training and then they come off the track and therefore there's only, I suppose, their lower body and accessory work to do there. So right there and then, rather than going, oh, we've only got 20 minutes for gym post training, we're doing 20, 25 minutes pre-training as well. All of a sudden they're getting a 45, 40, 45 minute hit um, two to three times a week um, and being able to build on that. So that's probably one of the things. 